Over the last year, we've seen a huge increase in the opportunities for 360 immersive stories. Um, Google obviously started with their cardboard headset, and then over the last year, we saw more people um, get, getting into the 360 waters. Um, in November, New York Times sent out 1.2 million headsets with to all of their subscribers, cardboard headsets. So suddenly, that weekend, New York Times VR was trending. All of their subscribers were putting on these headsets and experiencing immersive journalism. So you can see more people getting involved and more people experiencing it. And that's what's exciting at the moment, that we are, we are just stepping into the waters, but we're starting to see a lot more discussion about it and a lot more opportunities, thanks to things like cardboard making it accessible. This is what's really interesting to me at the moment. And there's lots of people, Chris Milk, Nani de la Pena, huge VR storytellers, um, that say that it's an empathy machine. You know, it, it's driving more emotional connection to a story. Some people think it do, does, some people disagree. I personally think it does. I personally think that you're getting closer to a subject. Um, and it, it depends where the narrative is. If you've got a reporter there, who's guiding you, you've still got that distance. But if it's just you and the character, like we see in films like Cloud Over Sidra, um, the New York Times Displaced, where they're very much character driven, it's just you and the characters in their world. So automatically you have a much better connection to the story and a much more of an emotional connection as well. If you're filming these things properly, it takes a lot of time, a lot of manpower, and it's not as simple as I first thought it was when I started entering into the 360 world. I thought it was just simply, you know, you hit record, you stitch it together and it's done. It's a lot more complicated than that. And um, so really you've got, you've got two different options. You either tell a story properly, which takes a lot of time, or you use it as a tool, which I call social 360, where you're just using a small, camera like that, a very, very small Vico Theta camera, where you're capturing a scene. And that could be a 30 second scene, a one minute scene, just to give viewers, the consumers, a chance to have a look around for themselves. That works best for things like the floods we've seen recently. Five Live used it for the floods. They tried it for the first time. I think it's their 13th most watched video now on Facebook. It had loads of views in the first 24 hours. So for people to have a, a glimpse of the whole surroundings, this kind of thing is great. If you're talking about a full story, takes a lot more time um, and a lot more kit to tell a story properly. And then you're looking at new stories that are quite feature-led. We've seen loads of things in the last year on um, the migrant crisis. We've seen you know, refugee camps, um, a lot of stories focused around those issues. So ongoing stories. Um, so it doesn't matter because they're not going to date by the time you've managed to stitch it all together. This is always quite interesting, um, particularly with reporter-led narratives. So if you're telling a story rather than having it led by characters, um, because you will inevitably do a piece to camera and you will be guiding the audience through the story. And then you've got to pick which camera you're going to look at. So it's easy with this because you've just got the one camera or you've got the two cameras but you're looking on one way. Um, but when you're talking about a rig that has six or seven GoPros, which camera are you going to look at? Um, and that's quite interesting to try and figure out. And also, the height of the camera is a big concern. Are you going to be looking down on everything or are you going to be looking up? And I've been playing with some content today, but I've been looking up loads and it makes quite an uncomfortable viewing. But you don't want it eye to eye um, because that's also quite uncomfortable. So it's picking the right length of shots and the, the right positioning of the camera. Um, but filming with a rig is, is always quite difficult because... The biggest challenge is that you've got seven cameras and everyone who goes out and films knows it's quite easy for a camera to fail. Um, when you've got seven of them, it makes it even trickier. So most of the time I've gone out and one camera has failed, either the aspect ratio has changed or the frame rate has changed. Um, somehow, I don't know how, but it has. Um, and that ruins a whole stitch because you can only stitch if everything is in perfect alignment. Um, so that makes it very, very difficult. But it's a lesson to be learned and you brush yourself up and you start again. 
The first thing I tell everyone to do is watch all the content that they can. Um, and it's quite easy with cardboard head headsets that you can pick up on eBay for a couple of pounds. Um, or these, which I, I love, which are just clip-on glasses, which straight away turn your phone into a VR headset. So they're really good. And then watch all the content. So the apps like Verse, um, the New York Times VR and Jaunt VR are brilliant apps to watch a range of content to see how stories are told. It is very much a new field that people are just exploring and there's not a lot done on what narratives work and how you tell a story in this platform, which is what I'm trying to work on at the moment. Um, so watch a lot of stuff to see what you think works and then start playing. And these are brilliant to experiment with storytelling. And we filmed things recently, like the Doctor's Strikes in 360. Um, last week I filmed the first news bulletin, a one minute news bulletin done in 360, um, which was quite exciting. Um, I don't think it added anything to the experience, but it was quite nice. And you think, well, if that was on Facebook, um, a whole a whole generation, um, the, the 16 to 24 market, might actually watch a news update then, and they're less likely um, to watch it on mainstream television, but if they can see it on Facebook and they can scroll around as well, then, then that's got to be a good thing if you can get news to any audiences.